I, I know Costner is a is iconoclastic through and through, and we talked about that Vanity Fair story from 1989, where even then he's like, I don't care when someone says something is too long. I don't care. The script has to be what I want it to be. Mm-hmm. I have my vision, and I'm sticking to it. And this is one more example of it. And it's in the year in which that keeps happening. This is the year of Megalopolis. Like these. I, these boomers I, I, are doing what they want to do. They're going to finish their stories in the way that they want to. Zemeckis is like, the camera stays here. That's right. <laughs> I mean, another great example of somebody who's like, I have an idea about what yeah. cinema is and you can't push me off it. But then you watch it and you're like, these guys might be a little old. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of old men. I, You know, yeah. Um, I, I, I understand... I mean, we have to have Coppola and Costner in this in the same conversation because they have self-funded two uh, sprawling epics um, that are facing theatrical uh, cross currents. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. That's say? a very gentle word <laughs> yeah. for what they're facing. Yes, um, and the Matt Bellany just did a great episode um, on the town about like the financial stakes of Horizon in particular, and then they, and then they do bring up Megalopolis. But like, man, Costner's not. Coppola. He's just like Kevin. I the situations are similar, but like mm-hmm. Costner is not Coppola. And some of the 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 choices in this, and even just the choice to be like, you know what, I'll I'll just do my version of Yellowstone and and because I can and I want to, and because I don't want to be doing someone else's seems to yeah. be what's happening here. And it's not bad. I mean, they're importantly bound by the fact that not only are they two hugely successful people who've both won Best Picture, Best Director, who have been sure. responsible for very memorable aspects of Hollywood in the last 50 years, but neither of them could get any traditional studio here or abroad to actually pay for their movie. And so they both have found ways to effectively broker distribution-only deals from studios in America. And so, essentially, it's all on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, having seen part one now, would you guys say that Kevin Costner's gamble was worth it? I am really reticent to like evaluate something artistically based on like somebody's personal financial investment in it. I I do think that unfortunately the way in which people consume films now has changed so drastically since the last time he made a movie even in open range that it's hard to imagine like part one even being in any theaters by the time part two comes out. Like, I don't understand even. So you, you only people who will see part two are those who saw part one. Then there's going to be a, a natural bit. Just going to see part two. What? Without, it's a great, but bit. there's going to be a natural attrition from those numbers. Anyway, if people will be like, I, it's not I, for me. I, I didn't will like not it. be seeing yeah. part two. So part or two, I can just wait to see it at home. Exactly. And as I watch all, all my other episodic Westerns. So the, the upside of that conversation is, is that he owns the movie. So whatever distribution channel he decides to license it to, I'm not sure if there is a, a negotiation a Max with Max there already. There may be. But either way, in perpetuity, he'll be able to make it available wherever he wants. If he wants to license it to Paramount, he can do that if they so want it. If he wants to put it on the fucking Criterion channel and they want it, he can do that. So it's, it's a really interesting thing because he's counting, I think, on a lot of downstream dollars. To make, specifically make clean. DVD sales at Walmart, which is a thing that he said. He says that, and frankly, his fans do still buy DVDs. You know what I mean? He obviously has an older fan sure. base. You, you are yeah. fans. I, I own a lot of his films. Yeah. Um, but I think he more means, I think PVOD, streaming, yeah. Yeah. all that stuff is in theory. This is not a, just a, not a corporately owned product, and that's very unusual. That, like, if he had just, if this had just been done in a less, like, fuck it, Joe Boo, I do it myself. Mm-hmm. Like, he could have done something where maybe, like, CBS was like, this week we are airing Horizon in its entirety at, like, a miniseries event. Like, there yeah. are so many creative ways that a partner could have, like, maximized this, and instead it's like, nope. It's, it sounds like they didn't want it. I mean, it I'll sounds like they didn't the want movies. it. You know, I mean, well, he hasn't talked about whether or not he asked the TV network if they wanted this, right? That's That hasn't been posed to him as far as I know. Right. It feels like it feels like it's made for TV, with the exception of the fact that like it's in Monument Valley. Yeah, I mean um, the other problem is is that uh, in terms of the financials of it is just before we were, I was just reading about how the West was won before I walked in here. Nineteen sixty two adjusted everything, whatever, cost fifteen million, made fifty. Yeah, yeah, it has every big movie star in the world in it, and it cost fifteen million dollars, and it made fifty million dollars, and was a cinematic event because you wanted to see it projected across the screen in a certain way. Yep. 
this has got Sienna Miller and Sam Worthington, and it costs $150 million to make or whatever. Like When they're done with all four, it's going to be hundreds of millions. Yeah, yeah, so I think that's like pretty indicative of like where we're at like with the business side of this stuff, where it's just like these things don't make sense anymore. There is an interesting thing that is happening with filmmakers, though, and I think that this is... There are children of Costner and Coppola and all of these guys who continue to assert control, which like is literally children like Sophia or no. Well, there, of course there are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if any of Kevin Costner's children have gone into filmmaking, but the the sort of the descendants, the creative descendants. So obviously Tarantino reportedly made a deal with Sony when he made Once Upon a Time in Hollywood to regain control of the 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 film. Coogler, yeah. And mm-hmm. now Ryan Coogler is making this movie for Warner Brothers next year that after I don't know how many years, 25 years, years, he will own. And reportedly part of the thinking there is like, this is like buying a house. This is an investment. This is something my family can have forever. And they can continue. It's an annuity. They can continue to make money off of it. So just like purely from the business perspective, and I don't I didn't listen to that episode of The Town yet. So I don't don't know if Matt talked about this, but (laughs) the idea of like, if we get enough people to accept that maybe it's better as a TV show, Horizon could be something that, continues to make money for them for a long time. It's just, it's so clearly going to be such a red letter, you know, splatter fest on the pages of the trades on Sunday morning right. where it's like, Horizon, $8.7 million, disaster, Costner, cooked. What happens to part two?